hot. All right, let me see. I can put my AC on. Hey, everybody. Come in and say hello. Hi, Naomi. Hi, TD McCullough. Hi, Future Dr. Bunny. I think that says, hello. You are in. Psalmist Seer, hello. Hello. From Houston, Sandra K. Al Allen, hello. What's up, everybody? Keep coming in. Free is the new me. Uh, family man. Come on. Let me see. Looks like I'm freezing. Let me see if this works. Hey, everybody. Kim Stratton, good to see you. Hello, hello. Hey, everybody. Yo, let's come in. I got a little bit of time, maybe 30 minutes or so to spend to you. And my battery is not the best. And um, so I do want to be able to fulfill my commitment. I told you I would give you three days of teaching about the subject matter of lust and ministering to people who uh, are battling uh, sexual sin and sexual issues. And I started yesterday and uh, we had a real, 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 real good. Hey, 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 Apostle Yolanda. We had a real good beginning to this conversation. So we're going to um, uh, go to the part two of this. All right. So um, all of you guys can see me very clear and um, hopefully you are in a place where you can uh, focus and pay attention to what I'm going to give you because this is going to be a very important part. If you have not seen part one of I Want Out, um, go to my Periscope. It may have just actually come down or tried on YouTube. Somehow somebody always puts my um, Periscopes on, on YouTube and um, it ends up uh, getting up there in that particular way. So let's figure out if we can go ahead and spend some time to, to, uh, together today. Hold on, because I know my, my stuff is wow. Come on down now. Okay. All right, so let's go and let's do some work. Yesterday, we did a good, uh, we had a good beginning to this and uh, we're going to keep going today on this subject uh, and it's a very important subject. People are screaming around the world, I want out and uh, some people don't want out and so uh, it's going to be very, very, very hard uh, to conceptualize a lot of what I'm talking about if you don't uh, get to see the first couple of videos, but go back, again, this is part two, so for sake of time and for the sake of battery, Praise the God of the Bible. I'm not going to have time to revisit what we have already relayed. Paul said, I won't lay again the foundations that have already been laid. All right. Uh, this is I Want Out Part 2. And this is uh, instructions for people who are wrestling um, with their sexuality. Hey, Aaron Bailey. Hey, uh, Nazarite, is that my Jimmy? How are you? And this is also for those who disciple other people. I will not follow you. And don't come on here telling me to follow you. Bam. Um, I've been doing better about my clapbacks. And I've had several reasons to clap back in the last couple of days. And I was on my best behavior. Um, but I'm going to deal with this. And I'm going to uh, uh, help you with something. We're going to deal with part two. And the part two is um, uh, the role of accountability in lust. The role of accountability in lust. In lust. Yesterday we dealt with the relationship between the eyes and the heart, and today we're going to deal with the necessity of bringing accountability into lust and a sexual battle. Obviously, you need to have a great amount of courage uh, while you're sober um, to invite somebody in your deliverance process. Normally, when a person is struggling in, in their sexual character, uh, the way the devil gangbangs him is he allows for shame, guilt, embarrassment, and condemnation to be the guardian devils that keep a person from developing the courage to admit that they are dealing with what they're dealing with. So shame, guilt, condemnation, and embarrassment join together like a demonic mafia to prevent a person from ever saying out of their mouths to another human being, I battle with lust, I battle with uh, uh, pornography, I battle with uh, adultery, I've been in an adulterous affair. 
Um, and so they gather together to stop transparency. But it need, you need to wonder why transparency would be fought like that. Uh, it's because there can be no deliverance without transparency. You will not be delivered from the spirit of lust or any spirit from that matter without developing the courage in your heart to say out your mouth, this is an area I need. And now some religious people um, would probably think that it's unwise to admit and it's unwise to confess and it's unwise to be transparent because you're glorifying the devil or you're speaking it into the atmosphere and all of that stupidity. But you don't need deliverance if you don't have a diagnosis, you got to be able to diagnose the condition of your soul if you're going to send out an SOS in the spirit to say, I need help and I'm at the point where I'm strong enough to walk through uh, a process in this. So this is very important for you to realize. Now, when you're dealing with accountability, here's what it looks like. If nobody in your world knows what it is like to live life um, as you on a normal day, then nobody's going to have enough information to track your movements, your activities, your abnormal behaviors to know whether or not you need help, right? And so whether this is fornication, adultery, porn addiction, uh, I know people who uh, uh, frequent prostitution bars, all of that whole full uh, spectrum, accountability is important. And here's the reason why accountability is impo important. One of the things that come under attack in a life that is uh, driven by or under attack by lust is responsibility. You cannot be lustful and responsible. I want you to think about how important that statement is to this discussion. You cannot be lustful and be responsible. And the reason why you can't be lustful and be responsible is because love, lust, is deeply selfish. It is deeply self-centered. It is deeply self-worshipping. Lust will not consider, in most cases, the effects of the woundings of the fractures of another person when it is manifested itself in a moment. So I don't know a person that's bound with lust and is responsible. Now, you may have responsible areas in your life, like you may do good with money, you may be able to finish school or all of that, but irresponsible sex, irresponsible sexual behavior, either with yourself or with another party, speaks to and irresponsibility and is abusive when counting the cause of what selfish irresponsible sex could do to you and the soul of another person so that's something you want to know it's difficult to be lustful and be responsible again because lustful does not lust does not have a logic it doesn't care about what you catch while you're doing it it doesn't care about who you involved in it it doesn't care about abortion it didn't doesn't care about stds doesn't care about body parts uh, uh, being scattered. So it's difficult to be lustful and responsible. Now, because that is our equation, if you know that lust is not responsible and lust breaks down your ability to be responsible, then you have got to invite some objective voice, verbiage, conversation to keep you responsible for your battle. If you have a battle, do not involve other innocent bystanders in your war. That is one of the reasons why you are jacked up. If you were molested or if you were raped or if you were introduced to pornography, you were jacked up because somebody was irresponsible with their war. If you are a, a choir dude or a recording artist who some other, I'm sorry, flaming choir dude recruited you into the Christian homosexual community in the community choirs of, a wor of the world and showed you how to live your life singing and going undetected in your flagrant sin, then somebody else's brokenness recruited you. You were recruited. And if I'm no Satan, coached you and how to live your life in these destructive behaviors. So you have got to take responsibility for yourself by quarantining your battle and refusing to allow your brokenness to break other people because that's how you got where you are. Have the decency to battle and have that battle be in a place where it can be managed, it can be monitored, and it can be affected. So you've got to become accountable. Now, by accountable, this is what I mean. When you invite an accountability source into your battle, it is your way of saying, I am really ready to be delivered. And here's how you can test yourself. 
If you cannot talk about it, it still controls you. If you cannot talk about it, it still controls you. If you cannot admit it or make it a subject of conversation or go public with private info, then it means that that thing that controls you privately still holds you. You only tell on things that you are not afraid and you are not guilty of controlling you. So if you can go public with it, if you can admit it, if you can make it a matter of conversation, then it loses and it weakens its hold off of you. But nobody ever admits when a thing is really controlling them. The way you begin this accountability process is that you admit to some Somebody, that this thing has been what it is, has done what it's done, and you have invited the parties that you've invited into it, and then you're ready to be made answerable for what you do. Now, unfortunately, this may be very controversial because it's people's idea that I can do whatever I choose to do as an adult with my body, and that may be true for everything not submitted to the Word of God. When you make your decision to submit to the Word of God, then it means you also have to submit to the parts of the Word of God that give you instruction for what you do with your body, which means that the Bible gives you an accountability for sex and sexual behavior and the Bible also gives you uh, uh, the the full fledged uh, uh, consequences and repercussions for irresponsible sex and sexuality so you got to be accountable now what should I look for in an accountability person in an accountability party there's a number of traits you need to look for and I don't have the time to go into all of them but I'm going to give you a, 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 a number of them Number one, you're going to want to submit this information to somebody that you know will not use it as a weapon against you. They need to use it as a weapon for you, but they don't need to use it as a weapon against you. So this disqualifies anybody that is uh, um, um, uh, jealous of you, anybody who can't wait to see you fall, Anybody who is looking forward to the opportunity to know some dirt on you or to discover your humanity because of their own insecurities. And so it evens the playing field when they find out you got a weakness just like they got a weakness. So you need to eliminate that. You've got to be able to confess your faults one to another. The Bible says that you may be healed, which means that there is healing in being able to put your story in the hands of somebody else. That somebody else cannot use this weapon against you. They must use the weapon for you. Number two, that somebody else actually needs to be invested in your war. They need to be invested, concerned, empathetic. They need to be have a develop a, a, a level of altruism concerning who you are and what you've got going on. And they need to know its consequences and its effects about how if you cannot manage where you are and manage what you've been doing, uh, how it's going to affect your purpose, your potential, and your future moving forward. So they're going to have to be very sensitive to the Holy Ghost and aware of your personal potentials. They've got to know where you're going to know what they're protecting and to know the risks associated with you not being able to be responsible with what you're doing sexually speaking. Another thing that you're going to have to look for in accountability is somebody that will not be moved because of an emotional moment. Now you do need a listening ear. You do need an understanding heart, but accountability is not agreement. You're not looking for somebody to say, I understand why you did it and then leave the conversation there. You need a party or a group of parties that says, I understand why you did it and now this is why you should not do it. A good accountability partner will paint the picture of your lack of responsibility and they will paint the portrait of why your, your irresponsibility, sexually speaking, is damaging yourself and damaging other people. The Bible talks about how if a man uh, fornicates and if a man is in sin, he sins not just against God, but against his own body. And somebody has to be able to have the language base to paint for you, particularly if you're anointed or if you are gifted or if you're going somebody to paint the picture of what your life could look back or furthermore, what you could reap as a byproduct of investing sexual destructive uh, behaviors, even if they are a willing party and a willing partner. So that's very important. They need to have a listening heart, but they deep need to also be unmoved by tears. Another thing that you need is more than advice. If you're going to have an accountability party, they're going to have to be well-versed in what the Bible says about sex and sexuality. One of the uh, glaring 
crisis is in America is our lack of confidence in the word of God. Now I could preach that whole day right now, but somehow when we got so involved in our, our cultural and social sway, social sways and all of the things that's going on in or around or about the subjects of our world and what's normative and what's acceptable and what's allowable by American culture and even human development, somehow we stop putting priority on what the scripture says. And if we can't make a decision that the scriptures are true and that the scriptures are right, then and we cannot be delivered uh, because it is that the stuff that is written in that word in that Bible that releases us uh, uh, from the powers of hell that want to break us that want to break us down as men that want to break us down as ministers want to break us down as women of God and so you've got to really really be careful about taking advice from people that's beyond above around or contrary to what is written in the Word of God to us that believe the Word of God is the final and the highest authority for our decision makings our discipline plans, our diets, and our doings. And so because of that, somebody that's going to be uh, an advisor, uh, a confidant, and an accountability portion with this is going to help make you responsible, but they're not going to use personal experience to do it. Uh, when I first started discipling people uh, earlier on, um, this is my 12th year pastoring, so probably about year two or three, I learned of a situation where there was a young a preacher, a younger preacher, uh, that had had a series of sexual events, right, and a series of um, sexual indiscretions that an older pastor learned about. And an older pastor told the young guy, um, uh, boy, don't worry about that. You know, uh, you a man and um, men have needs, so you can, you know, ain't nothing wrong with what you touching and following as long as you didn't stick it in. And, you know, I thought that that was the most stupid advice that somebody filled, filled with the Holy Ghost could tell a young developing preacher, even if the principle and the theory is as men, you know, you have an attraction to women. But from that to happen and to be the counsel of somebody at the earlier phases of their development as a minister because here's a deal yeah it might be a cute sin and a right there and it might be cute to fur around with but sin grows bondage grows uh, uh, all of that stuff progresses and it may start around with some heavy hot petting blowing breathing blowing but but then over years you're going to groom a monster and then what you people will do is put a robe on it and a collar on it and give it an ordination credential you know and then use we all have sinned uh, and fall short of the glory of God to excuse uh, what a person did with their authority, influence, etc. So it's very important that you have somebody that is more committed to the Bible than what you feel about your own personal battle. Um, the, another thing that I'm going to suggest to you is you're going to have to know and you're going to have to be well versed in deliverance. Later on in this series, I'm going to do a segment on the deliverance session. When I'm going into a season of deliverance, what do I need to do? How does deliverance effect. I may even have to do a theological expose uh, for you pastors out there. Listen, I am shocked today that in 2016, Negroes are still teaching that if you don't talk in tongues, you're not safe. That baffles me how unlearned and how read, how unread many of you cultish Pentecostal Christians are running around the world trying to make sure that everybody have stammering lips before you let them into heaven. To me, it's the stupidest, most scripturally inept statement a person can make. The Bible says in Mark 16 that tongues is a sign to them that believe. But it does not mean that a person cannot be a believer if they don't talk in tongues. And you people believe it because people build whole churches and whole organization on that crap and they make you repeat it and rehearse it every day from the time you two to the time you three. 30, so you really believe it and you're looking at all the rest of us and I happen to speak in tongues by the way all the rest of the people who don't talk in tongues so the fact here's a deal here's a deal here's a deal you got to use the Bible for the basis of what you do and what you say and what you evaluate in scriptures so that's very important that you know where was I going with that Anyway, the deliverance session, and uh, I got to do a whole theological expose on why Christians can have demons. Without deliverance and ministry and prayer, you got to have the ability, uh, you, you're not going to have the spiritual stamina to stay out of a lustful situation or to not put yourself in the situation boundary-wise to do something that you're going to regret. So the point of this periscope is to let you know if you're thinking about deliverance from lust, if you don't include the subject matter of accountability, you're not having 
having a thorough conversation, to have and to make a thorough decision about deliverance from lust, you've got to at some point beyond the journey, put this information in the hands of one capable to hold you accountable, not just to rebuke you, but to talk to you about where you are with this, how you're doing, because if you don't, you're going to end up getting people pregnant that you don't intend to be with. You're going to end up passing diseases. I mean, it's, it seems like there's a new fad. Let's, let's everybody go out and catch something. I mean, just irresponsible, random sex. I, I'm still shocked today that, that grown women are having one night stands. To me, I mean, since the days of Mary J. Blige to now, it's shocking to me that people still uh, uh, invest their, the highest form of communication to perfect strangers. It's just, it's just crazy. So, I mean, um, you got to involve somebody else in this war, but then involving somebody else in the war is your statement saying, hey, I think I'm ready to walk out of process. I'm ready to start to be accountable for what I do and where I've been. Now, is it your business? Absolutely. Every, you know, but when you make it somebody else's business, then you bring yourself to be answerable for what you do and what you uh, to people and on the behalf of other people. So that is very, very, very important. This lady is saying sex is really talked about in the church, and I agree. And here's a problem. This is why most Christians, and here's, a, I've learned that the most legalistic Christians are the freakiest. These Negroes got y'all thinking you'd go to hell if you don't speak in tongues or your salvation is inexperienced or is incomplete because you don't talk in tongues. And they some freaks. You got molestation. You got fondling. You got old nasty, freaky, deaky organists. And you got bishops fondling little boys in hallways. And you got all kind of molestation incest going on. The most legalistic denominations are the freakiest. Christians, it's freaky. And because we won't talk about it, we let the devil talk about it and we let the public school talk about it and we let all of them put it out there and we let all of them educate it. But as long as sex and sexuality is God's idea, the church ought to have something to say about it and where it goes. So let's just put that out there. We've got to have something to say about sex because it's God's idea. He created it. And frankly, my beloved the, the devil don't do sex better than God does. It is his idea. All Satan did was make it perverse and he took the rules out of it and took it out of its context. It's like fire. Fire is great when it's on a stove or heating water. It's horrible when it's on your roof. And fires are burning people's houses down and ruining stories beyond itself. So this is why it's very important that we've got to include accountability. You've got to develop the courage to give somebody else's information. I have this app on my phone. I, I, I go here. I roam the streets looking for prostitutes. I go to these old massage shops looking for Asian women to do sexual favors for me. Or I go to midnight musicals and concerts and I try to make eye contact with my local tenor so that they could come and do random sexual things with me after the church is over and then we shout together and bro each other and act like we're brothers in the Lord when the darn truth is we're whoring around and sleeping with each other sodomizing each other to death when nobody's looking and because the Lord knows our heart we don't have to really own about it all we gotta do is take some communion and it'll all be over and it'll all be done with so all this crap and all you Grammy award winning warlocks you know with these choirs that's gonna fry really hard for in, in recruiting vulnerable men into your choirs and turning them out by showing them the ropes on how to be raped and how to become rapists in the midst of your community choir you're gonna have a special place in hell i tell you the truth by god but anyway when you decide that that's happening happened to you you've got to put this information in the hands of somebody else and you've got to put this information in the hands of somebody that's willing to disagree with what you've done because if they agree with what you've done or if they understand what you've done they can't be bound by the same thing you can't mock a fellow prisoner so you can't you know, submit your information to the hands of somebody who lives with the same devil. So that means you may, if, you, if you're if you a gay man, you need a straight man. If you are a, 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 a woman that is, is, is sexually pr promiscuous, and a lot of you all are really, especially if you, listen, in the church, there's a couple of men that can look butt ugly that'll get women throwing themselves. The preachers, the deacons, elders, or ministers, any musician, if you are any one of them, you don't have to be attractive for a woman to sleep with you. They will sleep with you, perform sexual favors for you, throw themselves at you, be flirtatious. Oh, you so stupid. Oh, you so stupid, boy. And just be humping and pumping and pounding all the night away 
after they sing at their next uh best. so you don't that's how you know it's demonic these sisters are not even uh, attracted to who you are as a people because a lot of them are ugly they just like to have random indiscriminate sex the men get it worse though because when men are bound i think they wear it a little bit more obvious than women and women just get excused for a lot of their stuff but i know a lot of very seductive winnows women sopranos and altos so now i know i've said that the tenor section of america needs deliverance but you sopranos and altos and you handmaidens and, and prayer warriors need it too Glory to God, because horniness is not a teenage or a puberty issue. I know some very old horny women that are throwing themselves at preachers every day, watching them glisser, you know, looking at your local drummers or your local bongo players or whatever, making Google eyes, and you're going. You're going to give it up. So you need a, a woman that's opposite from you to hold you accountable for that stuff. A woman who's married to say, hey, where you at, how you feeling, how you doing, where you at with that. The real problem is we don't want accountability. We just like to admit stuff. We don't like our accountability. We don't like to report it. We think that spirituality is personalized and customized, you know. But in America, you got to have accountability to flip a darn burger. You can't work for a McDonald's without a supervisor. The only thing we don't like accountability in is our personal personal spiritual walk. We said it's man-made. It's a man. How can another man? And then we humanize people to make sure that they're not superiors or that they don't have the right to bring us to accountability. Accountability. So you've got to understand why accountability or the absence of it may be inflaming lust and, 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 and reckless sexuality in your life. Somebody needs to know what life is like being you. Watch me and who you are when the lights are off. So yeah, you might not be ready for that. If you're not ready for that, then go back and watch part one of this that I recorded yesterday and you stick with those steps. Repeat that step over and over again until you're ready for this step because this step is when the war starts. The war starts when you invite somebody else in and you tell them, hey, this is what it's like. It's been really bad for me. I've done that. So that's very, 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 very important, all right? So you've got to have a very strong accountability partner who will use your information as a weapon for you and not a weapon against you. That's very very important to those that bound are bound with lust. Listen to me. Your decision to be free from lust is personal. Your decision to be free from lust is personal, but your process is going to be a partnership. Did you hear me what I said? Your deliver your decision for deliverance is a personal one, but your process is going to be a partnership. Now, you may be out there with your proud self thinking, I don't need no partnership, but if you had the ability to fix yourself up until now, you probably would have done it a couple of fornication dates ago. So no, it's got to be a partnership, all right? Uh, I'll probably make time to do another Periscope uh, for part three, but this is the part two of this. I hope that you were blessed by it. Think about the subject of accountability and why it's important, why it's impossible to be lustful and responsible. So I want you to think about this, meditate on these principles, write them down, and get ready for part three of I Want Out. All right. I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you.